Hello everyone, welcome to Colouring Heaven. My name's Kirsty and today I'm going to be colouring fox fur using this cute little fox design by Selena Fenwick which is available from the brilliant Colouring Heaven issue 95, Fantasy Creatures. You can order yourself a copy from the Colouring Heaven website, shop.colouringheaven.com or alternatively you can follow the link which is in the description box below. Now the first thing that I did when I decided I was going to colour this little fox today was have a look for a reference photo that I could use. So we're going to be using quite a creative um, approach to colouring our little illustration but I did want to make sure that I had a, something that I could reference to make sure that my values and colours were right. I really want to use traditional fox colours. Um, I found this little guy here on unsplash.com, he's absolutely adorable. Um, I love how he's sitting in a very similar position to our little illustration. Um, the face is facing in the same direction as well so I can use it as reference for the, the face when we move on to there and I just thought it was all around perfect and very very cute. So I'll be referencing back and forward to that when I'm doing my picture today but you will see that we are going to be quite creative in our approach to our little fox today. Now, in addition to my reference photo, I also have got all my materials that I'll be using together. I've got Polychromos pencils. I love Polychromos when I'm colouring fur or hair. Um, they really let you get some good texture and detail. Um, the lead is very sturdy, so that's why I've gone ahead and chose them today. You can use any pencils that you like, you just have to make sure that you keep your lead sharp and if you're using a wax based pencil it can be a little bit more work to do that but certainly not impossible. I've also got a white pencil, I need an opaque white and the Polychromos doesn't quite cut it for me for that so I've got a Derwent Drawn Chinese white pencil here but you can use any white pencil that you like, Prismacolors are particularly good. Um, but yeah, that was just the first one that came to hand. I've got some jelly rolls, um, some gel pens that we'll use at the end to just add some extra little details and a bit of sparkle to our page. I've got a white gel pen as always, a black fine liner as always, and a little eraser just in case of emergencies. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when I colour anything, I like to get a base layer down. I'm going to start off with my polychromos ivory which is 103 and I'm going to go over all the areas that I'm going to have in any kind of warm tone and I'm going to get this base layer down there first before I go in and start adding any kind of detail or colour layers. As you can see our little fox actually has seven tails. The fox that was in our reference photo had the same colour on his tail as he had on his body so he had kind of the red fur all the way up. I have decided that for our little fox today we are going to have the white down the front of the fox, the mane, I think you maybe call it a mane on a fox as well and we're going to follow that through into the tips of the tail as well. So I'm not putting ivory onto the tips. I'm only following the ivory up here to where Selena's put the break um, between the base of the tail and the end of the tail and I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a very cool grey for any areas that we're going to use for our white fur. So I'm not doing anything very precise here. I'm following kind of the direction that I will want my hair to go, the strokes to go, but I'm honestly just using very kind of back and forth light pressure strokes and I'm just filling in those areas. Now this is a really particularly good way of adding in just a base layer really to your colour. I find that if you add a little layer down first any layers that you then put on top are going to adhere much better. I also like getting a, a base layer over white because I feel like it makes your colours a lot more vibrant if you've got the same tone that you want to use over it under. So um, just adding this ivory is taking the stark whiteness out of the page and just adding in a warmer kind of tone. So I'm going to have some red for here. 
Now, I am going to leave the face to last and do that as kind of a separate little project. So, I'm going to get the body to where it's kind of about 80-90% 80, finished. And then we're going to move on the face and we're going to just treat that as its own little thing altogether. Right, so I've got my ivory down all over the areas where I'm going to want to have the red fur. I'm now going in with my warm grey 2, which is 2201271. And I'm very, very lightly going over the areas that I want to have white. Now, this may seem a bit crazy because we've got white paper and we want white fur and why on earth are we putting grey down? But white is never actually white. White is al always picking up the colours around it. It's always reflecting the sky, the trees, whatever it's next to. So when we actually finish our page, you will notice that through putting a lot of detail in and putting some nice base tones down, this lovely grey, the warm grey, I've chosen the warm grey because it's a red fox and obviously there's quite a lot of warmth in the fur. So I've chosen a warm grey, but you can also use cool grey as a base for white. You can use blue as a base for white. You can use yellows. Um, just have a look at the actual image that you're referencing. Get the lightest tone that you can and apply it over the whole area. But you will see when we finish, this is a very worthwhile step, particularly when you're trying to portray, portray white. So I'm getting to the last couple here. And again, I'm following roughly the direction that I will want my um, first strokes to go. Um, so I'm just changing slightly when I get to each tail, but they are all pointing in the same direction. Rather than using circular motions, I'm using very light, gentle back and forth motions. But we're adding such a soft, light layer anyway, you don't really have to worry or be super precise at this moment in time. Now, when I'm getting to the join here between the what Selena's kind of distinguished as the, the end part, she's added this um, kind of barrier between, I'm actually just overlapping slightly with some of the ivory um, because in nature obviously some of that hair is going to mix in with each other and I'm going to take this all over my little mane here now I've made sure as well to choose a paper that's very very similar to that of the book. The Colour in Heaven team send me a PDF copy of the page that I'll be colouring and then I print it off but just to ensure that I know that any techniques or um, tips that I give can be replicated in the book I always make sure to just use a paper that's very similar to that of the book. So this is just a lightweight piece of craft card. I get it from Hobby Shop in the UK and it's really very similar to that of the book. So anything that we do here on this page we can definitely replicate in the book if you are a colourist that uses the book. Now here on my little paws which in the reference photo are black I'm going to go in with my warm grey too again because when we're doing black fur it's not completely black um, I'm adding in a light base layer here so that when I go in with my black and with my darker colours I can leave some highlights um, and the highlights will be seeming to be white but obviously as I've explained they will not be completely white they'll be a lighter light 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 tone of grey so I'm just adding that in now as well so we've got a very 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 um, light base layer all over our fox now and we're going to start going in and building up the colours now I have chosen a lot of nice warm 
tones here. I'm going to start off with some Burnt Ochre by Polychromos. It's 9201187. And all the colours that we're using today for our fox are going to be in the description box below. So don't worry about remembering everything that we're saying just now because you can go back and get a wee note of everything that we're saying. Now, what I'm doing is I'm starting to just add some dimension in here. Again, I'm just still using backwards and forwards um, strokes. I, If I'm doing fur, I tend to use backward forward strokes rather than little circular motions because rather than wanting a really, really smooth blend that those little circular motions give us, it's ideal if you're doing skin or... Um, anything like that we actually want that kind of textural effect here and that was the whole point of putting down the base layer of the ivory so um, when we're doing our backwards and forwards motions if there is any little bit left out we've got the right tone underneath so as you can see I'm concentrating on the kind of around the shape of the body itself I want to give quite a 3D effect, so I know that the majority of the light is going to be hitting the part that's closest to us, so because it's sitting with its kind of little, what would you call it, its back end, its bum out towards us, this area here on its body is going to be the bit that's closest to the light, so it will be the bit that's picking up the most light. So I'm just starting to build up my colours. Um, around the areas that would be mostly in shadow but we are going to build this up and this is really just getting down the the main basis of the shape and then we'll go in and we'll build up now when I get to the little black lines I just softly go over it a few times because covering those lines slightly with the actual colours that we're using is going to help us get a more realistic effect And I absolutely love colouring fur. It's just so therapeutic. You can really get lost in it. And there's going to be so lots and lots of opportunities to really get your teeth stuck into some of the images that are in this issue. And really get super, super creative with some of them as well, which is just wonderful. Okay, so the, brown the burnt ochre, rather, I'm going to follow around and I'm going to do the same thing on my tails. So I'm going around the outer edges mainly first, following the direction. You'll see I was using this direction when I'm doing the body. I'm now following this direction for this tail and I will do a slightly differing direction with my forward and backward strokes for each tail depending on exactly how they are um, exactly what direction rather that they're pointing in. So again, like I said, I'm not being very precise at all when I'm going over this kind of distinction here because I want the colours to overlap slightly like they would if it was if it was a natural tail. So again, I can see by the direction that this has been drawn and how and how it's sitting on the page where the light would be hitting this tail mostly and I know that in this area is where we would have the more lighter tones where the light is is hitting it so i'm focusing on building up a deeper color all the way along where the join is because there would be a between the body and the tail because there would be a bit of a shadow there and i'm just focusing that here and i'm going to do this on the other tails as well And again, just slightly changing my direction and I'll just build that up a little bit more here and I like to build it up by using those strokes rather than the circular motions because it just helps with the texture and I'm just going again just over these lines here even deeper there where the 
two tails are overlapping. Now, moving on to the third tail here. And anywhere where we've got that extra bit of shadow, I'm just going in and I'm putting down a darker layer of the colour because I know that we're going to be building that up deeper anyway. So we can do it now. And here where the join is again between the body and the tail and between the two tails. I just want to build that up slightly here. I think that I've left that a bit too light. But again, this is very much the first stages so we can go back and fix anything that we're not 100% happy with later on and this polychromos lead is still super sharp which is why I love them so much if I was using Prismacolors or one of my beloved wax pencils at the minute I'd already be sharpening this again this one is going to be a little bit more in shadow um, because the light will be obstructed by the head so I've made it just that little bit more of a deeper kind of tone overall there and picking out my direction here. Selena's made it kind of easy for us because she's pointed the ends of the tails so we can quite easily see the direction that we're going in. And just moving on to the last tail. it up slightly just here in that little corner and just slightly here but again we're going to come back in with this colour in a little while and we re look at everything. Now the other area on the body that's going to be red is this little teeny bit here that's shown on the legs so I'm just again it's the same technique that I was using on the tails I'm just kind of going over that, that little um, distinction there that she's got between the, the furrier bits and the paws and then just taking a little bit of care to think about where my light is going to be hitting and getting my base of this colour down and maybe I'll do the same on this one here so again there's going to be a little bit more shadow on this one um, because the light's coming in from this direction but we are treating it as a kind of forward point and light source so I'm more just really concentrating on building up the shadows on the areas that are underneath the mane and behind the, the face and ears so okay Quite happy with that now. I in our reference photo the the fox fur is actually a bit more orange than I had originally thought fox fur even was. So I'm going in with terracotta, which is nine two zero one, and I'm really just going to pretty much copy what I just did. Um, again, we're just doing the flicking backwards and forwards motions. Um, because it is fur, you don't have to be super super precise um this fur especially usually on wild you know wild animals the fur is quite textured so you kind of want that not messy but you want that um kind of little jagged edges and your your little overlapping areas are are really good for giving the appearance of a kind of realistic effect so this honestly is not something to go into being really intimidated or worried about and um, you can't really make a mistake at this point and remember even when you're following a reference photo it is just that it's just a reference you're not being commissioned to do a photorealistic picture of a fox or anything like that you can use as much of your own imagination and your own 
technique and interpretation as you want. So just relax into this process. It is quite repetitive. I enjoy that. A colour for therapeutic reasons. So doing the same thing and getting into a little rhythm is something that I actually really enjoy. I also do enjoy producing something that looks quite realistic and I like using images like this that are more cartoonish and um, giving a realistic look to them. Um, I don't know if anyone has seen my eye tutorial that I did on the Jasmine Beckett Griffith Wingling um, but I kind of did the same thing there, took a cartoon-ish image and tried to give it a more realistic effect so that's what I love to do. It's almost quite dimensional already because we've been careful about watching our values and leaving the lighter areas that would have been hit by the light quite light. So you can already see where we're going with it and it's just a case of building it up in layers really. So that's why I really like to put down my um, base layers first and get my base tones in. So when we use the ivory and the and the warm grey, um, that's why I like to get those tones in. Because now I don't have lots of white that I need to, to fill in that's quite jarring to the eye. It's all quite cohesive already. So I'm going to actually go in now with some... Um, burnt sienna which is 9201283 and I'm going to go around I'm concentrating on anywhere that we've got these joins that would be in shadow so you'll see me going around you can see me as I do it I'm going to go around the shapes and I'm going to just start darkening them up I'm still using the little backwards and forwards motions, but in some areas they're a little bit smaller because I want to get right in to the to the joins. I also want to go over the lines, the black lines, to start going over those um, and bring them down to the tone that we're using. So. I'm going to just put a couple of these darker, just a couple of flicks going up into the area where we're going to transition to our white for. But yeah, I'm mainly concentrating on anywhere that two areas join and that would be in shadow. So well, down at the bottom and you will see it starting to become quite 3D and quite dimensional. And that's what we want really. A little tip as well, because it is obviously a fantasy creature and it's a fantasy book. When you choose a reference photo, if you get a reference photo of a fox, just say, but you want to do a pink fox, just make sure that you choose the values of your colours correctly. So make sure that you have a value that's light enough, one that's dark enough, and one that's in the middle, just like we've kind of done with our oranges here. Um, and you can change your reference photo to black and white, and it'll allow you to just see where you're putting in your darks and lights, and if you've got the values right. And if you have your values right, you can use any colour under the sun, and it will still look correct to look at. So if you've got your darks dark enough and your lights light enough to the human eye, it'll still look right. So that's a little trick that I sometimes use if I want to use a non-traditional um, colour. For even for I use it quite a lot if I'm doing hair. So if I want to do maybe purple hair or green hair. Um, I use that trick quite a lot. I just changed my reference photo to black and white and I use it more for the tonal value rather than for the actual colours themselves. 
and once you get used to doing it it's really really easy and it just means that you can have a real creative um, approach to any any picture that you're doing so you can see I've gone in just on the body here and I've added a little darker bit here just another little distinction um, and we'll go in and we'll add a bit more detail to that later um, and I'm still going around just adding in here anywhere that would be more in shadow just adding this more kind of darker more ready tone so as we said this tail has just fallen probably in a, a bit more shadow due to the placement of the head so there's just a bit more of that darker colour there and there's quite a bit of shadow here as well so I'm just filling that in back and forward building it up in here where it's more in shadow Just slightly going over those lines again and then once I've done this I'm going to have another quick look at my reference photo just to refresh my memory here it is so, yep, I'm quite happy with the tones that we're building up. Definitely getting very similar colours. You can see the red, kind of sienna, kind of tones here. And the more um, orangey, yellowy, browny colours. So, I'm quite happy with how this is going. I'm going to now go in and add a little bit more detail into these lighter areas. And to do that, I'm going to use brown ochre. Because in the reference photo... I noticed that the lighter tones were a bit more yellow so again I'm just bringing both of the sides together using these backwards and forwards light motions um, and we're going to achieve that more yellow tone by using this brown ochre which is a kind of yellowy brown a, a bit of a mustardy colour I think you would kind of class it. I'm just going to do that the whole way. Again, we do not have to be super, super precise. We're just bringing these two together. And then you start to see that the work that you're putting in is paying off. Now, once I've added this in I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to work on my paws the reason being I like to do all the finishing touches on my pages near the end um, I find it much easier to get the values right when I've got most of the colour down on the page um, and I find the tweaking part easier to do at the end I really um, I can't go area by area and finish one area at a time. I try, but I just can't do it. So I'm going to leave the tail and the red part of the body um, kind of where it is just now. And then we'll go in at the end with our very dark colours and we'll we'll tweak everything, and our lighter colours, and we'll tweak everything up at the end. Um, I'm going to go in to my paws with the warm grey which is 9201273 and it's warm grey 4 and I'm going to add in the majority of the shape and the dimension that I want in with this colour which is our mid-tone. 
So I'm going round just like I did on the on the tails and on the body. I'm going round the lines, the outer kind of perimeters of the shapes, and I'm putting in lots of that mid tone. I'm leaving the areas that I think would be catching the light blank at the moment, just with that warm grey that we put in earlier. And I'm just building this colour up. Now, the fur on the paws is a bit shorter and a bit less textured than we have and on the legs is a bit shorter and a bit less textured than the fur that we have on the tails and body. So I'm using much smaller kind of strokes here and you'll see I'm doing the same thing on those distinction lines. I'm going over them with the warm grey as well which starts just melding those kind of areas together because a fox in nature wouldn't have such distinct breaks in between the, the colours of its fur. Again, I know that my light is coming in kind of from the front so I'm just following what would be the shape and adding in some dimension back and forward, deepening in these joins and the little, oh my goodness, what do you call them? Toes? Paws. <laughs> and the paws. And I'm just adding in this a very light layer and then deepening up those lines. Same here. Now again, this paw is behind this one so it's going to be much more in shadow. So you can go in and be quite liberal with the darker tones here. really think it would only be catching a little bit of light here. So I'm going to leave that a little bit lighter. Everywhere else is just getting a, a layer of the mid-tone and again this one as well. I think it might catch a little bit of light here on this um, part of the paw and that's it. So once we've done that we're going to go in with some dark sepia which is 9201175. This is a neutral grey brown tone. Whenever, even if I'm colouring anything that's black, I never go in just with black. I always build it up in layers. It just gives it a much more um, realistic and textural effect. So I can see here that this fur would be laying on the paw and there would be a really deep shadow here. So I am going in tiny little circular motions here because I want this to be very, very dark. Oh, I forgot this paw here. It's fine, we'll go back in and do that. Deepening up these. Now I'm doing this. The, the fox in our reference photo was sitting in the snow. So I didn't see all of its paws. So I'm doing this really from imagination. But if you just follow the basics of anatomy and just think about where's the light going to be hitting it, where's it in the most shadow and apply your darker and your lighter colours based on that, you'll do a great job. Darkening it up here where the join is. And you could go in with your um, darker tone first if you wanted and add less of it and then go over with your mid-tone. Um, I just use the pressure that I'm applying to the pencil itself to leave some of that mid-tone colour showing and, and, color, and cover other parts of it deeper um, and I just find it's easier and it takes a bit less time if I do it that way. light at all. So I've put the mid-tone all over the whole lot. So the mid-tone was a warm grey 4 and then I'm just picking out the details 
with this dark sepia again. And I'm just going over everything that is left white here with the grey. And we're using the black last because we've built up some nice layers of mid tones and transitional shades. So when we go in the black with the black, rather than looking flat, it's going to add texture. The lighter you leave it, the shinier it's going to look. So it's completely up to you. It's a, just a creative decision. So I'm just adding a bit more definition to these paws. I'm going over the joins here just to blend them in to the fur. And this paw back here is really really dark stuck in the shadows so making sure that I just get dark enough to show that and I'm taking them to again where I'm about 80% happy with it and I will then go back in at the very end and if anything needs to be a bit darker or maybe lightened up a bit I can do that at the end with my black or white. So again, I'm going to have a bit more shadow here. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. We're going to go in now and we're going to work on the white areas of fur. Now, although there's a lot of it, this is actually quite a quick um, part of the drawing for us. So I'm going in with my warm grey four again. So I'm kind of sticking with the same tonal values like all the way through and what I'm actually doing is I, I do want to leave the majority of the white fur with that very very light grey that we put in earlier but it is quite long fur so you are going to have little areas of the fur that overlap and there is still going to be shadows in there so I'm literally just following round and I am adding in some little shadow areas maybe some little flicks of darker um, pieces of fur that might be in there as well and I'm just giving it more of a dimensional effect so I'm going to go around the whole, if every um, area that we're going to have white and I'll end in the main and I'll show you how we add in the shadows and things and you'll see once we've added all the grey how it actually brings out the white effect. And I am pressing really, really lightly. You don't need a lot of pressure. Um, that's another reason that I like to use a base layer when I'm using polychromos because they are oil based. The first couple of layers do go down quite translucent, but the more pencil you have on the page, the more vibrant they are. So because I've already got that grey tone down here um, I can be quite gentle with the layers on top and they will build up really really nicely so I'm just going to go round and I'm going to use my grey that I'm using just to literally tie these edges in a little bit Because where the red fur would be overlapping with the white, 
it'd probably be a bit more shadow there. So it'll be a bit darker in those areas. And you can do as much blending of these areas as you want. You might actually want a really distinct um, change between the areas. Absolutely up to you. If that's the case, just leave this um, little bit out. You don't have to do it at all. You can, you can do whatever you like. So this is where we are now. I'm going to don't know why I put that down because I'm going to use it now just to add in more detail into the main. So again, it's directly on the front. Selena's added in a lot of lines here showing kind of where and how the, the fur is lying on the body. So I'm going to use them as my um, template and I'm going to take the cues from them. So here where this line is, I'm just going to kind of Bring it up a bit further and just add that in. This bit seems to be lying behind this bit, so I'm going to darken that shadow, that area up there, just to show the shadow. And here, where the face is lying, this bit's going to be in shadow that's cast by the face. So I'm just, I can take a very, very light layer of this slightly darker grey and I can go all the way along. Now I'm just dragging it down slightly because I want to bring out the shape in some of these pieces of fur and that's what's going to give it a dimensional effect. Now, once I've established a bit more shape to it, I'm then going to go in and I'm going to do the same as what we've done here on the tails and I'm going to add some directional strokes that are just going to add some texture and hopefully trick the eye into thinking that we have kind of wads of fur lying in certain directions. And what you can do at this point, once you're a wee bit more confident of how you have it laying, you can pull the top and the bottom together. And you can kind of show which pieces of fur are lying on top of the others, which is what I'm doing. So as you can see, I'm just starting to establish a bit more structure into the main here. That's giving it a bit more of a realistic look. I'm going to add a little bit of dark sepia in there just to remind you 9201175 and I'm going to start just picking out some 
just very fine little lines. I'm going to deepen up these lines that I've added in here that are following on from the darker ones that Selena's added. And I'm going to add in a few little darker bits just to show where I feel the, the fur would really be um, kind of folding up against itself and creating shadow, um, deepening up the shadow underneath the chin as well. This is where going in with lighter shades and your mid-tones um, really help, particularly if you're like me and you're quite a nervous colourist. I'm always worried about putting colour on the paper in case I make a mistake or mess up or whatever and doing it gradually and <laughs> incrementally just it makes me feel a lot better so I already know that I'm happy with the shapes with where I've got the um, shadows and things and I know that if I go in and darken up certain areas I'm not going to ruin it because I've already established my um, shadows. I'm just bringing the value down a bit. And I'm moving on just to the tails now. Now you will notice that I'm adding a bit around the joins again. And we're going to use this sepia colour as well when we're just deepening up the shadow on the on the red on the orange fur. Okay, so now I've got the actual body of the fox quite close to where I am happy with it. I think all we really need to do to the fox's body now is a little bit of blending, maybe some burnishing and adding in some really stark highlights and darks in at the end. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to do the fox's face now. Now, this is a very, very cute little um, image of a fox. I have decided that these markings here on the forehead, I'm going to do black. Um, there is no real special technique I'm using here. I'm just filling them in with a matte black and I'm going to go in at the end with a gel pen and add a really stark highlight so that they look as if they are a little bit shiny. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do that. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of detail into the fox's face. Not lots, but just a little bit to give it a bit more of a realistic look because we've spent all that time on the body and making sure that we've got our colours and things right. So I'm going to get all the areas kind of mapped in and then we'll just get to it. I'll be using the same techniques that I used on the body and the paws. So yeah, you'll just be able to kind of watch or colour along and we're just going to do exactly the same. So the fox's eyes are kind of a brown at, with large, large black pupils. So there's only a tiny, tiny little area here for us to actually colour. So I'm going in with the brown ochre and then I'm going in with the burnt sienna very, very slightly just to give a little bit of dimension and that's just in the very corners there of the iris. Um, but there's not really a lot of space for us to, to get a lot of um, dimension. As I always do with any pupil, animal or human, I'm going to add some dark indigo before I add in my black. So that's 9201157 and I'm just giving it a nice kind of 
medium pressure layer of that, which I'll then go on with a, a medium pressure layer of black. Well, medium to hard. These are very, very small eyes. So there's not a great deal that we can do with them. The way that we'll bring them to life is through our highlights, but we'll do that at the end. So, like I said, I'm going to go in and I'm going to mark out some of the areas that we're going to have our different colours. Um, here, around the nose and down towards the nose, we're mainly that orange fur that we've got on the body and in the tail. Like with the paws, the fur is slightly shorter and a bit more smooth. So we are just using smaller little strokes and I'm just following around the areas, kind of concentrating on the direction that the fur is going. And on the ears, there's a kind of mixture of the red fur and it moves in towards black fur towards the back of the ears. So I'm, I'm leaving that kind of blank at the moment. I have forgotten to put my base layer of ivory down, but what we'll do is any areas that need warmed up or where the white is still showing through, I'll show you how to do that with the ivory on top of the the orange colour that you're putting down. So you can, as, as I said at the start, you can do it either way. Um, I normally like to put a base layer of that down first, but I forgot, so that's just how it goes sometimes. And using these little backwards and forwards motions are going to help add a textural effect. Now, our little fox in the reference photo also has little eyebrows. Oh, so cute. Um, so I am going to add them in as well after with a darker colour, probably the sepia. Now, once I start getting to the nose, there's a bit less fur on the nose. It's a lot smoother, so I'm just bringing it down in quite a sweeping, longer stroke there. And adding in the different lengths of strokes and the different um, directions is going to add a lot of dimension into your fox's face. So I've left a little area of the fox's eyes um, quite light because in my reference photo there's a little bit of extra detail that I want to add in. So around the fox's eyes, they're kind of outlined in a dark, dark grey, almost black, which then comes down into the sides of the nose. So I'm adding that in. And because it's so dark, I'm using tiny little circular motions. But your backwards and forwards motions will work just as well. I'm going to take this um, warm grey four again and I'm going to go all the way over these areas that I've left blank up here on the top of the ears. Just back and forward motions. I'm not being precise at all because these are very, very dark in the reference photo. So I 
I'm going to add quite a lot of black over. So this is really just a mid-tone. And there's a little bit of black fur showing just on the top of the head. The inside of the ears are black as well. So I'm just going to add in here and I'm going to leave a little tiny little area there where they are catching the light along the smooth black skin and again just on the outside of this one here okay perfect so I'm happy with how this is kind of looking and taking shape now I'm going to go in with my terracotta just to add in a bit more of the vibrant orange tones to the um, fur again I'm just being really conscious on the direction that I'm going and the length of the strokes that I'm using um, to add in this brighter colour. We'll get a bit more of this orange in the middle and we'll work out towards that um, brown ochre colour along the sides of the nose. And because I've already got the black in, I don't have to be too worried about going over there. Ears and the reference photo are a bit furry kind of around this area here so I'm just going over that with my terracotta. Anywhere that I think the hair will be longer I can put in the slightly longer strokes. And the little shorter bits, I'm just going back and forward very, very small. A bit more here, just along where I'm going to put the eyebrows. And then we're going to go in with our brown ochre all the way down the side of the nose. And the hairs kind of go in towards the centre of the face. So I'm just moving in that direction. And that continues up around the eye. Anywhere that I feel just needs a bit more of a yellow tone because this brown ochre is very yellow. I'm just going over it. The areas here on the side are very textural so we can get a bit more some varying colours and things and I'm adding a little bit here on the bits of the ears and just around any little areas that I feel need a little bit more of that yellow tone added. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add in the detail on the black fur on the top of the head and around the ears. I'm using the black and I'm adding some very tiny, tiny little strokes here and some very, very dark, some quite heavy pressure here just around the ear itself because inside those ears were very dark. I'm going to do the same on this side. And because it's a flat, dark colour, I'm just using my little circular motions just to fill in all the tooth that I can. Right, and then we're just adding in some black fur. Just following the same pattern that we were doing before, where it's longer here. Selena's kind of 
giving the impression that it's a bit longer there, so the strokes are a bit longer. And then as we're moving down towards the head, it's going to be very, very um, tiny little strokes. I'm leaving some space in between the strokes and that's just so that you can see some texture in the fur. more pressure here where we would have a bit more shadow and then I'm just following back up getting a bit wider and a bit longer with my strokes as I go and I'm adding a little bit of texture just around the line of the line art itself just so that it looks a bit fluffy Dragging that down a little. Great, so I said that I was going to add little eyebrows to the fox um, and I'm going to do that here with black um, just to match the reference photo. So I'm putting a tiny little dot and I'm pulling out just as I would with maybe an eyelash if you were doing a, a portrait. Um, because in the reference photo, the eyebrows are quite sparse, but they're quite long. So, um, just going around and adding those in. I'm going to also darken up these areas here. They are very, very dark. A reference photo. And the nose is almost completely black as is the kind of bottom lip so we'll do that just now as well so it's almost completely black now our little fox actually has bottom lip ones which is I'm going to add in just for a little extra bit of detail you don't have to and I'm going to colour in the nose it's looking so cute now we're almost at finishing touches. I'm going to just add in some warm grey 2 to this area here. And the fur is very, very dense and very, very smooth here. So I'm actually going to add pretty much a, just a full layer of this colour. And then what we'll do is we'll add a couple of little um, textural elements on top. I'm going back and forward, but I'm keeping everything very, very densely packed together. I'm not, oh, excuse me, I'm not leaving a lot of space between. There's not really any white of the paper being left. I'm just blending it in with the sides here slightly. And I'm going to take that up around the eyes as well because we do have some of that light white fur around the eyes in the reference photo. And then I said I was going to go over the lighter areas with ivory and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm adding in some ivory. I'm going to actually put some here just in the centre of the ears. Um, and I'm adding a decent amount of pressure just now. I'm quite happy with my little fox just now. So if you choose not to put your base tone down and you're just feeling like you need to blend it in a bit more, you can do it at the end. Just give it a nice medium pressure layer. So there is still some tooth left in the paper. 
but a nice medium pressure and you're just going really over the whole thing. You don't have to be super precise because you're going to still follow the direction of the fur. And I'm actually going to do the same on my tail and body and I'm going to use the ivory for the burnishing. So I'm going to move on to that now and you'll see I'm just follow following the direction of the fur generally and I'm going over all the areas that are lighter that I want to be light that we've left as our highlights. And again, if you want super, super bright white highlights to mimic very shiny fur, um, you can add in some white gel pen or um, some metallic gel pen at this point, and that will give the impression of a super, super shiny fur. I don't like doing that when I'm doing a wild animal. Move around just a tiny bit on this because we're not really catching too much light there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the ivory on the paws as well, just very slightly. And I am going to add in a bit of white on the paws, but the ivory will just add that little bit more dimension as well. So again, I'm just medium pressure and I'm just going round the... I'm kind of colouring around the area of the highlight and not right in the centre of it. Perfect. Now, I'm going to go in with my very darkest um, shade of brown that I have here which is walnut brown 9201177 and I'm going to add in some shadow anywhere that I feel just really needs to be just kind of darkened up. Now I'm doing this very very at the very last stage because what will happen is the walnut brown will go on top of all the layers of colour that we've got already and the tone will be a perfect shadow for our fox. If I went in with the brown first, then that would be the base tone that was there and everything would, would blend on top of that. But I want the orange red to be the predominant kind of colour. So I'm lightly going back and forth. Again, I'm always following the direction of the fur. And I'm just adding in a bit more shadow and just maybe a bit more of that detail that got lost when we when we blended there with the ivory. And I'm really liking our little fox and how he's looking. It's always nice when you get to the finishing stages and you can see the fruits of your labour. So it's really probably quite obvious what I'm doing, but I'm really just going around anywhere that, any areas that are underneath other bits far or anything that I just feel you maybe want a little bit more textural and I'm just adding some of this walnut brown in. And I'm going to go with this walnut brown and just blend in the dark fur here and add just a little bit of a soft layer of that warm walnut brown between the red fur and the black just to make it a bit more cohesive. I'm going over some of the bits that are a bit lighter than I wanted them to be as well. 
and I quite like using a brown or like I said a blue over a black or under a black because it just adds a little bit more dimension. I'm using it here just to pick up some of the detail that's in those longer pieces of fur here around the ears and the same principle here on the fur at the side which is a bit longer. Now, to finish off the white fur, we're going to use our white pencil. So, I think I said earlier I have, oh, excuse me, I have um, a Derwent drawing Chinese white. And we're going to use this to pull in the areas and the shadows that we have on the edges. And we're going to pull it in. That's a wax pencil for you. Um, we're going to pull them in to the middle. So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm kind of pulling in from here and in from there. And that is how we are going to bring them in and keep that directional effect in the fur. So I'm also going over the darker lines as I'm doing this. The, the lines in the line art. So just you follow the direction that you've given your fur already. Now, when I actually complete this image, this fox is actually, I think, a kitsune. And I'm sure that in Japanese mythology, a kitsune, as it becomes more powerful, it grows more tails. And eventually, once it gets the maximum number of tails, can then transform into a human and I'm thinking that that may be what Selena is trying to portray here in this. So when I do finish the image I'm going to use the same colours from the fox to colour the um, little lady figure here um, and try and kind of portray that it's been a transformation from fox to female and I'll share my completed page on the Facebook page which is Friends of Colour in Heaven and you can let me know what you think but yeah I was so excited when I saw that it was another issue that was going to have Selena's illustrations in them because I just love them I love her more um, gothic kind of realism ones as much as I love these okay so I'll do the same on the main we're just following the directions I'm being quite, particularly around the line art, I'm giving it a good amount of pressure. And I'm just bringing it all in together. The, the main thing when you're doing this is the directional strokes. Because the white pencil is going to pick up some of the darker layers that you've put down and it's going to drag them in the direction that you colour. So if you are doing... Um, kind of circular motions it's going to get a bit muddy so you really want to just be a little bit precise in where you're placing it so now I'm going to take some of the white and I'm going to just add a little bit of highlight here in my paws like I said I was going to do And I'm going to take it and I'm going to do the same around my ears. So just the inside of the ears where we were picking up some light in the reference photo. And a little bit of um, highlight just through this black fur. I'm going to add a highlight just here down the middle of the face. And a bit more here. And then I'm just going to double check any areas of the tails, the joins in the tails that have still got really stark line art because I don't want that showing through. So I'll just go over that. That's great. I want to just darken up this area here inside the eye. 
and these are just really my finishing touches. Just add a bit more definition there around the nose. Now I actually I have a black fine liner here that I'm going to use to fill in my um, little shapes here because it'll be much more black. And then we can add some of our gel pen. Oh, it's so cute. I love foxes. Now, if you want, you can use your fine liner to go over the very, very, very super, super dark areas. So, um, your pupils or the, the inside of the ear just along the um, fold. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it nice and natural. But yeah, fine liners are great for doing these little intricate kind of bits. Right, now, just as very, very finishing touches, I have gone in and I've gone over some of the line art. That produces, in my opinion, a bit of a more realistic look. Um, I would like to do that along the rest now of the lines. Now, you can use a wax pencil that's in a similar shade. So if you've got other Derwent drawing pencils, you could definitely cover um, some of these black lines. What I love to do, um, especially if I'm doing little fantasy creatures, is use gel pens. Um, particularly metallic ones they give such an amazing beautiful effect and I'm going to show you how I would do it so I'm going to cover the black lines with this bronze jelly roll Sakura it's a metallic one and it's number 705 and what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to go over the black lines anywhere that there is red fur I like to use a little circular motion when I'm using a gel pen and then I'll let that sit for maybe 10 seconds and then I take a cotton bud and I just buff it out and like drag it out a bit and it just gives a gorgeous little shimmery glimmery effect to the lines um this is 100% optional and 100% extra but we're going to do it. You can also bring a few little bits up and that'll put a tiny little glitter effect through your fur as well. It's so nice. It's nice to do. And the cotton bud just buffs it out so it's not such a stark line now obviously if you're using more fantastical colors this would look amazing if you don't have gel pens like i said you can you can easily use wax pencil that they cover black lines very well just use something in a decent amount of pressure and in a similar colour to what you've used on the area that you want to cover the line art in. You can also use Posca pens. If you're using a more heavy duty um, paper, you could use paint, acrylic or gesso or... But this is my preference. So I've chosen to go with bronze. I did have a gold there as well, but the gold that I've got is really very yellow. So, perfect. And the last step that I'm going to take is just using my white gel pen. I'm going to add a little tiny, tiny highlight on that bottom lip there. And on the nose. And if it's too bright, you can... Just touch your fingertip while it's still wet and it'll lift 
off and I'm going to add in some little highlights on the eye. To bring our little guy to life and like I said, I think I'm going to add some highlights here on our little black design to give the impression that it is shiny. Now I'm using a jelly roll white, all the gel pens that I've used today are jelly roll but um, again you could do this with Posca, you could do this with acrylic, you could use any um, anything white that's your preference. To add such a stark highlight though you really want something that's not pencil, it needs to be something that's going to lie on top of the pencil. So. Our little fox is finished. I think he looks absolutely adorable. Um, I love the effect of the fur. I love all the colours that we've got in there and I really hope that you enjoyed it as well. So if you did enjoy the tutorial, um, don't forget that you can order your own copy of Colour in Heaven issue 95 fantasy creatures from the online shop. Just head to shop.colouringheaven.com or click on the link in the description box. Um, Colour in Heaven always love to see your colourings so if you would like to upload your own fantasy creature just pop on over to the Facebook group Friends of Colouring Heaven and lastly please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss out on any great Colouring Heaven videos in the future. Thanks very much for joining me today. Bye!